Right now at 5, big changes are ahead for East Town Mall, why the city hopes it could take on a new life. Also, the April election is just four days away. We break down some important races you should be aware of. I was in the middle of the roadway. The driver appears to be unconscious and not breathing. And we're following the aftermath of a deadly crash involving a car versus a cow. How local community members are reacting. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. Eric will be back on Monday. It's been years that several retail spaces at East Town Mall have sat vacant. But as big box stores move out, the city of Madison hopes new housing can move in. Braden Ross has the story. Eastsiders probably remember this space in Madison as the old Boston store, but for the last few years, it's looked a lot more like a ghost town. But good news, this space is up for sale, and pretty soon this whole area could be dedicated to housing. Providing different dynamics within within this area can change what you know what you express, this kind of like ghost <laughs> area that is very empty. It's been more than five years since the last customer walked through those doors. Since then, the building and the nearly 15 acres of land it sits on have sat unused. We do see the potential of changing those big boxes, uh, expensive parking lots and disconnected street network into totally the opposite, something that it's more walkable. The city of Madison recently rezoned the area to allow for mixed use developments to be built there. The real estate agent for the old Boston store property told me today whoever buys the land could easily put more than a thousand apartments there, housing that Madison desperately needs. Angela Puerta is one of the lead urban planners on the city's northeast area plan, which includes the East Town Mall. This area uh, is unique in the sense that it is uh, in a great location for employment. Um, it's the second most diverse area in the city. Over the next decade, city planners will shape the future of development in Madison one area at a time, starting with the west and northeast sections. It embraces everything that you can imagine that a city does, transportation, housing, parks, economy, everything. The Northeast plan is still in the planning stages and Puerta says they want to hear from the people who actually live there throughout the process. We have our expertise as professional planners but we are not on a day-to-day -day basis living in that area. We want to still hear from the community. There is still time. Eastside residents, now is your chance to weigh in. If you want to give any feedback on this site or any others in the Northeast Plan, you can find all the information you need online at cityofmadison.com slash Northeast Plan. For now, reporting in Madison, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. Braden, thank you. Next tonight, this is a live look at the sky cam. It was a mild day across southern Wisconsin. Temperatures were in the 50s for the majority of the day. That felt nice, but tonight some showers could be making our, their way into our area. For more on tonight's precipitation, let's head out to the patio. Meteorologist Jacob Montesano has the weekend forecast. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Susan, and temperatures right now are still in the 50s. A little bit of a breeze, but overall doesn't feel too bad out here as temperatures really across our entire area in the 50s at this hour. Some locations are a little close to 60, but it looks like most of our region in the 50s, and it is a bit cooler as you get closer to the lake right now in the 40s out near Milwaukee. Now looking at the evening forecast, we are going to be dry through sunset, but that rain will start to develop a little bit later, kind of around 10 to 11 p.m. and continue through most of the night. So here's a look at future track. Some light rain possible around sunset, but we're not really going to see a lot of precipitation until around 10 to 11. Rainfall could be heavy at times, especially for Dane County and areas to the south, but most of this will clear out by around sunset. There could be a few lingering showers for areas north and east of Dane County, but most of Saturday will be dry, especially starting in the late morning and continuing throughout the afternoon hours. So looking at specifically the temperature forecast night, it's going to be a fairly mild night, and typically that happens when we have some rain showers. We'll have lows around 40, kind of upper 30s to lower 40s range. But I'll talk more in detail about another rain chance that is expected for the first half of next week. I'll have more details on that coming up a little bit later. All right, Jacob, thank you. In four days, Wisconsinites will go to the polls to vote for the presidential primary and many other down-ballot races. Political reporter Will Keneally has more on what to expect on Tuesday. Will? Well, Susan, we've been tracking two constitutional amendments that will affect what money can be used to help cities run their elections. Now, 
shared input from the conservative Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. And conservatives broadly have raised concerns about outside grant money during the 2020 election. They say that it favored Democrats. And they want to ban that practice. Now, constitutional expert Howard Schwaber says this is emblematic of the two parties fighting over who can vote. I mean, we should be clear, uh, this, is, this is entirely a uh, fight for partisan advantage. And, you know, certainly there should be no assumption uh, uh, that only one party is capable of these kind of actions. But in the last 10 years, it has very much been the pattern uh, in Wisconsin. Now, he says this is similar to what we've seen in Wisconsin in terms of gerrymandering. And you can see more from our interview this Sunday at 1030 on For the Record. We will see you Sunday, Will. Thank you. The FBI shared some concerning numbers about fraud and scammers in Wisconsin. According to its most recent release, it found there were over 7,600 scam complaints filed in Wisconsin, with the reported losses totaling over $90 million in just one year. The FBI shared some tips on what you should know and how you can avoid being scammed. As for people to remember is that they're, if they are being uh, asked or told to convert any of their money to cryptocurrency, into cash, into gold, or even gift cards, uh, oftentimes are being utilized for this type of fraud as well. If you or someone you know believes that believes they have been scammed, the FBI is asking you to contact them at .ic3.gov. Meanwhile, Verona police sharing new details today on, or, on an arrest made in a fraud scheme. Yesterday, police received an anonymous tip of an elder fraud that would occur and that they were watching the home as it happened. The victim handed $30,000 to a 23-year-old suspect who she believed was an IRS agent. The scam happened over the internet when a pop-up appeared on the victim's computer telling her she had a virus, then was provided false information in a phone call. Police are asking residents to be cautious when receiving pop-ups while using the internet. A Madison staple will be returning to the Overture Center in April, bringing fun for the entire family to enjoy. Starting Saturday, April 6th, Kids in the Rotunda will be holding the first of many free performances featuring local, regional, and national talent. The performances are tailored for younger children. Each Saturday will feature three performances at 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. Each performance will last about 45 minutes. The one o'clock performance will also be interpreted in American Sign Language. Next tonight at five, the Brewers were one of the few teams to not kick off the inaugural 2024 season yesterday after a rainout in Queens. But good news, clear skies and plenty of sunshine as the Brewers took on the Mets today. Freddie Peralta got the nod as the opening day starter for the crew, and he was dominant on the mound, pitching six innings and giving up one one hit and only one run. Offensively, it was a solid day for the crew as well, tallying three runs on eight hits, and the Brewers take game one, three to one. Tonight in some Sweet 16 action, Marquette is back on the court. They'll take on the Red Hot Wolf Pack of NC State. Tip-off is scheduled for 6.09 right here on CBS. The winner heads to the Elite Eight and faces the winner of the Houston versus Duke game. In Kenosha County, the aftermath of a fatal car versus cow crash yesterday morning was caught on camera. Kenosha County Sheriff's dash cam captured the minutes after a car hit a cow. Dash camera video caught the cow still lying on its side in the intersection as deputies arrived. The cow had escaped its pasture when a 25-year-old man hit the cow head on killing both of them. The crash was loud enough to wake nearby residents. There's been some close calls here with animals, you know, farm animals wandering in the road, but oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that. There is no word yet on how the cow ended up in the roadway. The Kenosha County Sheriff's Office rounded up all of the other cows that escaped after the fence broke. The effort to reopen Baltimore's port began today, but it's an endeavor that many officials say could take months, if not years. Still visible signs of forward progress arrived overnight. The first of several large cranes is floating into place alongside the container ship Dolly, which is sitting 
trapped in the collapsed span of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. In the hours ahead, the largest crane on the eastern seaboard will join the effort. Laura Aguirre has more on the salvage operation, the timeline, and the potential cost. We're talking three to 4,000 tons of steel that's sitting on top of that ship. So we've got work to do. Which is why floating cranes are now taking position in Baltimore's harbor. They will be central to the daunting salvage operation ahead. Step one of that is we're gonna clear the debris from the channel. Step two is we're gonna remove the vessel. And step three is remove the rest of the bridge debris from the waterway. And when you have a chance to see that wreckage up close, you fully understand the enormity of the challenge. Eight people fell into the water when the dolly slammed into the bridge early Tuesday. Two survived. Two who died were recovered Wednesday. And search efforts for four others who are missing and presumed dead have been paused. The governor has repeatedly credited the fast action of those who stopped bridge traffic with preventing a higher death toll. Even after the bridge had collapsed, had that traffic not been stopped in the darkness, cars would have continued to come. So the life-saving work that they did cannot be overstated. One Uber driver says she was among the first vehicle stopped. If my passenger wasn't a little bit late coming out to the car and getting into it, we probably very well could have been on the bridge when it collapsed. The Biden administration has approved the state's $60 million request for the initial recovery and salvage operations. This work will not just take weeks. We have a very long road ahead of us. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. As far as the overall damage and rebuilding costs, a spokesperson for the Insurance Formative Institute says the bridge could cost more than $1.2 billion. Still ahead tonight at 5, Jacob is back with another check of your weekend forecast. Plus, Holy Week celebrations are taking place all across the world right now. More on that after the break. And the stock markets are closed today in observance of Good Friday, meaning yesterday was the last one of the first quarter for this fiscal year. We'll be right back. It's A1 Furniture's truckload mattress blowout. Queen Luxury Firm mattress only $299. Queen Euro Top $399. Queen Jumbo Plush or Firm just $499. All sizes available during this once a year mattress event. Only at Madison's locally owned A1 Furniture. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. Creating family memories is what Maple Leaf Landscaping is all about. We design and build outdoor spaces that bring people together. Landscaped spaces for any size family. Functional, beautiful, a place everyone will enjoy. And it all starts with a free visit at your home by one of our landscape experts. So call Maple Leaf Landscaping today and have us create an outdoor living space for your home. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to work in the yard, tackle a project, or enjoy family time, we get you the right products at the right prices. Right now, rewards members get a free $10 gift card with $100 spent on estate fertilizer, like $10 off all new estate premium 4-in-1 lawn treatment with four benefits, crabgrass prevention and contact killer, broadleaf weed control, and lawn fertilizer all in one application. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. We went to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison last night. I don't really get how the jackpots work. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison actually has had multiple million dollar winners. There are linked progressive slot machines at the same casino where local players increase the jackpot amount. And a standalone progressive jackpot increases when a player plays on an individual machine that isn't linked to any other machines. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. More ways to win. Find your perfect jackpot. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Get instant cash back at A1 Furniture. Save $50 off every $500 you spend, plus incredible in-store only deals. Your choice, two-piece sofa and love seat or sectional, just $10.99, and get the recliner free. Only at Madison's locally owned A1 Furniture. 
Get ready to savor the flavor. Culver's unveils a new sizzling menu option. Catherine Merck brings home the bacon with this special preview. Plus, we get an inside tip to shake up your favorites with some secret upgrades. That's tonight on News 3 Now at 5.30. From damaging drought to catastrophic flooding and severe storms in every season, the News 3 Now First Warn Weather Team gives you a deeper understanding of Wisconsin's ever-changing weather with special reports that go beyond the barometer. Only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. In the lead up to Easter, Pope Francis made history in a ceremony that broke from tradition. On this Good Friday, there are celebrations around the world to mark Holy Week. Leah Mishkin reports from London. From his wheelchair, Pope Francis washed the feet of 12 inmates Thursday inside a prison on the outskirts of Rome. The 87-year-old pontiff sealed each moment with a kiss and a smile. Many of the women were brought to tears. This was the very first time that women exclusively had their feet washed by a pope. That's never been done before in the history of the church. And what does that, you know, message does that send to the world heading into Easter? He sees the church not as a haven for the perfect, but a field hospital where everyone is welcome. CBS News Vatican consultant Father Anthony Figueredo says the Pope seemed in good spirits. You know, he's been in hospital several times, but this is a Holy Father, Pope Francis, who wants to go to the end and love to the end. Holy Week celebrations are taking place all around the world, from Spain to the Philippines to Guatemala. I've never seen anything like this. Despite ongoing tensions in the Middle East, Christians in Jerusalem are marking the holiday with a procession down the cobblestone path where tradition says Jesus bore the cross to his crucifixion. Pope Francis is a pope who wants to build bridges and he certainly hopes that what we live in these three days of death will be turned into new life, new hope. Hope for war-torn regions and these inmates, who the prison director says already got a ray of sunlight from the Pope. Leah Mishkin, CBS News, London. Good Friday is part of the Christian Holy Week, which ends with Easter Sunday when Christians celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead. Let's get a look now at your first worn forecast. If you're going on an Easter egg hunt Sunday, is it going to work, Jacob? Well, maybe. There's a slight <laughs> chance of rain and temperatures aren't going to be too bad. Pretty close to average for this time of the year, but certainly better than we will be on Monday. Now, we have the rain tonight and then rain for most of the day on Monday. And in general, we also are going to see fairly cool temperatures, especially for the first half of next week. Not necessarily as bad for Easter Sunday, though. Now, looking at the forecast for tonight, some light rain is possible around sunset, but most of the precipitation will enter a little bit later. Uh, around 10 to 11 p.m. it'll spread out across our area and continue through the early morning hours Saturday before sunrise. Now rain could be heavy at times. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a few storms here and there, uh, especially for Dane County and areas to the south. The further north you're located, the less rain you will see, but there also could be a mix of rain further north. Now as we get in closer to sunrise, a lot of the rain will have cleared out of our area and we're going to be dry fairly quickly Saturday and then throughout the entire day we're going to remain dry with most of the rain clearing out very early in the morning and temperatures will be pretty similar to what we're what we saw today. Precipitation for tonight could exceed or could reach an inch for areas near the Illinois border but for the central portion of our area expect around a half inch with areas off to the north only going to see about a quarter of an inch but that's not our only chance of rain for the next couple of days. Sunday we do have a chance of rain but mostly in the far southern portion of our area looks like most of the rain will stay to the south in Illinois. But as we get to Monday, we are expected to see more rain across our area. Uh, the rain could be heavy at times once again, and it also could last throughout much of the day, possibly even lasting into the overnight hours Monday and into early Tuesday. And we also could see a mix of snow before the system ends Tuesday afternoon. Now, this might be our actually our last chance of snow for the season. Can't say for sure, but Within the 10-day forecast, towards the end of it, it is looking a lot warmer. Now, here's a look at the precipitation forecast with tonight's rain and Monday's rain on top of it. We could definitely exceed an inch, especially for areas near the Illinois border. 
We're once again looking at the most rain for areas that don't necessarily need it uh, when uh, comparing to the drought monitor, but we'll still take the rain that we get, especially considering we are heading into to spring, big growing season. So we are going to continue to see uh, above average in precipitation, at least for the next week or so. Now looking at the temperature forecast, it's going to be cool for Monday through Wednesday with highs only in the 40s, but 60s are expected to return to the forecast by the end of next week and a continuing for the beginning of the following week. So overall next weekend is looking like one of the better weekends that we've seen so far this year, possibly the best weekend in terms of ideal outdoor conditions, simply because we're going to see temperatures in the middle 60s and we're not expecting a lot of rain before that 40s for the first half of next week with a few chances of showers. Looking at your first worn traffic, pretty good across our area, almost completely green and that a lot of that has to do with the fact a lot of people are on spring break, but nothing really to report in terms of traffic. If we look specifically at some times, we are green both directions for the Beltline and also uh, Sun Prairie to downtown. We are in the green as well, seeing 14 minutes on the Beltline, 19 minutes from Sun Prairie to downtown. And that's your first warrant traffic. All right, Jacob, thank you. Next at five, health officials are sharing their concerns as cases of MPOX continue to be on the rise. How those at high risk can protect themselves next. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Experience, knowledge, and results. That's what you need when you've been in a serious truck accident. Call Gruber Law Offices. We've successfully helped people injured by big trucks for more than 35 years. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Get an 11% rebate on everything at Menards. You need reliable appliances to help you conquer the day. And Menards offers a wide variety of reliable appliances for every part of your home. Criterion appliances are ready when you are. We offer the lowest prices with the largest in-stock appliance selection. Ready to take home today. This top freezer refrigerator is $4.89 after rebate. Or get this Criterion front load laundry pair for $5.29.55 each after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices, caps insulin at $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I've passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? After a serious truck crash, you need a team who knows how to handle trucking cases and gets results. You need Gruber Law Offices. There's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. You're watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. Health officials are sounding an alarm as cases of MPOX are rising in the U.S. while vaccinations to protect against the virus are lagging. And another subtype of MPOX is now a potential threat. Mandy Gaither has a look at the latest data and explains what those at high risk can do to protect themselves. In the U.S., MPOX vaccinations are low, but the number of cases is climbing. The CDC says there have been 511 reported this year through March 16th. That's about 70% higher than they were at this time last year. We're not even halfway through the year, so the concern is that those numbers may increase. 
Dr. Jared Fox with Orlando Health says anyone can get the disease, which is a less severe cousin of the eradicated smallpox virus, but men who have sex with men are at greater risk. It spreads through close contact. The numbers are still far below the tens of thousands of cases in 2022, but after a quieter year last year, experts say the U.S. is vulnerable for two reasons. The amount of federal resources available to manage the public health response has been cut and the CDC says in most states less than a quarter of the population at risk has been fully vaccinated with the two dose series since it was authorized for emergency use in August 2022. It's highly effective um, at preventing um, disease and it's especially preventing complications associated with um, NPOX. In December, the CDC also warned about another subtype of this virus that's been found in Africa that spreads more easily and causes more severe disease than the one from the 2022 outbreak. We want to get the word out that um, if you're in the high risk um, populations that are um, have been most affected by the NPOX, that you um, get vaccinated. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. MPOX symptoms are typically flu-like, including fever, chills, exhaustion, headache, and muscle weakness, followed by a rash with raised lesions that scab over and go away after a number of weeks. Stay with us. We're back with a final check of your first Warren forecast after a short break. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three Ps. What are the three Ps? The three Ps of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80 and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you too. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction to your loved ones with your final wishes. And it's yours free, just for calling. So call now for free information. Call 1-800-914-3131 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-914-3131. There's no risk or obligation. 1-800-914-3131. Call now. Well, according to the, th the thesaurus, having a stroke of luck can be called a good fortune. And for one person in Sin City, both definitions are appropriate. Between Tuesday night and early Wednesday, a guest at Caesars Palace won on three separate slot machines. The grand total, nearly $668,000. The identity of this very lucky person hasn't been announced, but in what could be a fluke, this is the third time within a week that more than half a million dollars was won in jackpots at this Las Vegas property. You know, they say the house always wins, yes. so if I'm that guy, I would retire from that <laughs> well, place. There you so go. Right. You could say, well, I beat the house at this place for sure. We're going to beat the house <laughs> with the forecast? Uh, depends on how you look at it. You know, the first half of the week is, or the first half of the 10-day forecast, I should say, 
not looking as pleasant as the second half. So we are going to see the rain tonight and then another round of rain, especially Monday, but we could see some showers Sunday and that rain may last into Tuesday and ending as a mixed precipitation with temperatures only in the middle 40s to lower 50s. And then as we get towards the end of next week, those temperatures are going to be much more comfortable as we're going to see the 60s return and next weekend may be the best weekend of the year so far in terms of uh, ideal conditions to spend time outside. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Jacob. Charlotte is standing by for News 3 Now at 6, which airs coming up next. Enjoy the